Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be casting some hybrids using manzanita burl that I stabilized in my last video and pine cones along with some diamond painting beads sent to me by a good friend of mine. First thing we do is we start off with part B resin and I use about four ounces of each for a hybrid this size and we start off with B and if you ever get into resin casting two things you'll be using a whole lot of is cheap plastic cups and tongue depressors or craft sticks we go through a lot of them now we got Sneaking up right at four ounces. Go a little over, that's okay. Just gotta remember what the number is. I use ounces, because I can remember that a lot easier than grams. Big numbers, don't remember them. So we're going to 4.1. There we go, close enough. Our little drop there. So we got 4.1. Tear it up. Always gotta weigh your cup first. Accidentally poured too much of this earlier. Going to weigh this up at four ounces. Okay, we're going to go a little over four ounces. 4.5. That'll work better for the pine cones. Now we do 4.5 of part A. Hey, I did that pretty good. And stir these up. And when you're stirring resin, it's important to scrape down all the sides and the bottom of the cup. The part B likes to stick to the bottoms of the cup. With the Luma Lake clear, stirring vigorously. I'm using a pressure pot, so I don't have to worry about these bubbles. When I get all these stirred up, I'm gonna start adding tellers. Right now, I'm gonna do the beads, just the beads in the clear for the hybrid with the manzanita burl. And all I'm gonna do is I cut them all out of the bags and I'm just gonna add them till I think there's enough. And the key to when you're doing things like this is add them early. That way they can kind of heat up and mix with the resin real well because the resin does get hot. I don't want it to be too jam-packed because I want you to be able to see the edges of the burl. So I'm just going to mix them up about to that thickness. I think I like that. And we'll set this aside while we prepare the colors for the other and I'm thinking I'm gonna do some black and red and I might just throw in some pearl white Let's see what we get grab one more cup Thank you. 
and I've been experimenting with lots of different things and glitters and I find that the finer the glitter the better it works I'm just gonna take one of these and I'm gonna pour a generous amount of glitter a couple of my craft sticks mix that up and I don't want this to be too see-through so I'm gonna go to like there's enough. Needs to be a little see-through so you can get the glitter effect. But I don't want it to get diluted by the other colors. I think that's pretty good. Now we're going to use powders for the red. This is a Pearl X powder and super russet. It takes a good amount to color a resin to get it bold and bright. And I got some fine glitter here. If I can get the bag open. And a generous amount of glitter. I hear ladies like glitter. Yeah. Tilt the cup a little bit to get the side of the Pearl X that's stuck to the side of the cup. I think I'm gonna need more glitter. Bet you don't hear many men say that. I'm gonna use some interference powder. Micro pearl, color this one. I got a little glitter in there, but it'll be all right. This is interference purple or violet. It's one of my favorites. And micro pearl just adds that nice sparkly sheen. I like to put it a little bit in each one of my colors that I use powders with. Give it a nice stir. And yes, I get stuff everywhere. That's why I have my mat. Nothing's supposed to stick to it, but it never seems to want to come clean. You can see that interference powder that gives it that Purple sheen, shimmer. That cream color there. I want it a little more opaque, so I'm going to add some Pearl Essence Powder from Illuminate. This really adds a lot of sparkle and helps it to be more opaque. Now while you're doing this, you can feel the resin start to heat up. I found that the best temperature to pour your resin is 
around 100 degrees. In the winter time, it's a little bit less because it's so cold in here. But in the summer, like today, around 100 degrees keeps things from settling. As you can see, my just from sitting there, my beads have started to settle. Gotta give them a stir, keep them all mixed up, all where I want them. with my handy dandy thermometer and I'm at 100 degrees with these so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this get it stirred up real well pour it right into the middle let it swirl around all of the different pieces Like I said, I always make too much resin. I'm gonna take my stick. I'm gonna agitate the beads. So they suspend a little bit better. If you don't like making a mess, resin casting is not a thing that you should be doing. start pouring these into our pine cones and we're pouring into the pine cones and I just kind of pour a little layer switch up my colors a little bit I want them to blend a little, but not too much. Pine cones will move themselves around as it gets, as it sets and it moves. Again, I'm gonna give those another stir. Just trying to get them to stop from sinking all to the bottom. Might even add a little bit right to the top. A lot of static with these beads. I'm sure you diamond painters have the same problem with your bags. There, it's just starting to set up now. You can feel it kind of thickening under your, your stick when it starts to. Now about this time, I need to get it onto my rack and into the pressure pot. Just a little bit of a touch, just to swirl the pine cones around a little bit. Pressure pot. Today I'm going to be using my Harbor Freight pressure pot because I have 
whole batch of hollows and other things in my big one. And you clamp these down. Nice and tight. I don't want anything leaking. Inflate. I inflate to just under 60 PSI. That's the working pressure for this particular pot. My bigger pot actually only goes to 50. This one here. At about 52, the pressure valve starts popping off. I'm gonna have to get a different pressure valve. Just pulled them out of the pressure pot after two hours, and this is what I got. The red turned out really good. You can see the little bit of interference purple that's in there. I think it'll look cool. And the one you've been waiting on with all the drills in it. Some of them did sink to the bottom, but I'll trim that off. Before I make the blank and it will be perfect. Thanks for watching.